Okay, can we just talk about the Colin Trevorrow Rise of Skywalker leak script for one minute? Brief Star Wars spoilers. Jump forward two minutes if you care. So this script sounds like it took some cool directions, but ultimately the ending not as fun as the uh, movie we got. I mean, we don't we don't know in its entirety. Okay. I'll say like we just have b- very bare bone outlines for the script. So, but it, at least I. This script is definitely feels like a natural extension of the other movies, which is a plus because Rise of Skywalker is sloppy. But I do appreciate yeah. Rise of Skywalker, though, in comparison, it's so wildly off the rails, is my feeling, with Palpatine and the Avenger and the, all the MacGuffins and all the introduced characters and the lack of Finn so having anything to do and Rose being nowhere. And it's just, and I was fine. I was totally and getting back <laughs> and Chewie getting killed for one second. And then being back two seconds later. And that, that film is just so, and Billy Williams having a very strange conversation with John at the end for a cut thing or Finn, not feeling comfortable telling Ray that he has force powers apparently. And just yelling Ray the entire movie. That movie, <laughs> Brother Scott Walker is such a mess that some part of me is like, you know what? At least it's it's different. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I celebrate when Palpatine shoots lightning at hands and uh shocks every plane in the oh, wow. atmosphere at we once get all to shut down. Force unleashed. <laughs> like force everything and everyone force unleashed is like, oh he pulls down a star destroyer, he's too OP, and here's Palpatine is like, I'll pull basically pull down <laughs> everything. Palpatine's like, hold my LaCroix, I'll be not right a, back. Not a, not a, not enough is it that I'm a reincarnated clone of this like Sith fan convention underground living and regenerating with my jar of snokes but also i can simultaneously <laughs> halt every single ship in this guy anyway uh pretty good and uh i like our weird movie that i hated shall we begin the episode <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's let's kick it sure let's thanks for austin for that hot thing let's rock and roll boys Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another uh, Nintendo podcast. I'm Matt Schultz, joined by Danny Cortelli and Austin Cummings, our lover and hater of Star Wars, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. But today... But I love Attack of the Clones. <laughs> <laughs> Clone Wars is pretty and good. And goodbye, subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to uh, veer off from Star Wars for a second, but we'll be back with Star Wars, um, as Star Wars is always back eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna talk about Pokemon and then a little bit of Smash and then wrap this podcast up. So, guys, Pokemon, Pokemon Direct, heard of it? Uh, happened uh, last week, and we got some great news. Was it last uh, Thursday morning? Mm-hmm. Um, eight eight, eight thirty a.m. our time, super early Austin time. Um, uh, that's what I call Pacific time. <laughs> a lot of time. people do. A lot of people do. <laughs> um, but we got a lot of new information about a uh, DLC coming to Pokemon, which is a completely new uh, venture for the Pokemon company and a, a good sign for Game Freak and just Nintendo in general to like, yeah, hey, this is a better way to uh, get our money than just re- re-releasing uh, the same the game, same exact game. Uh, making mm-hmm. a start from scratch, pay the exact same amount and update almost nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I do love Ultra Sun and Ultra <laughs> games I bought and was like, woof, can't do this again. Why do I do it? <laughs> um, so we are getting um, Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Isle of Armor coming out this spring, Crown Tundra later in the fall. Um, so two basically massive um, wild areas where they're basically ditching the, um, the fixed camera, which is awesome because... That's my least favorite part of the game is when you get into mm-hmm. a town and you're like, ah, that was so cool. Like I spent, I've been spending so much time in the wild area just because maybe it, it reminds me of that, um, you know, Breath of the Wild factor. Um, and I just, you know, I just feel so much more immersive that way. But so I was really excited because one, they're saying that both of these are going to be uh, larger than both wild areas currently in the existing game, um, mm-hmm. respectively. And two, um, the areas in which you interact in the town, like the dojo and other in the gyms or whatever, the interact like the towns and things that you're going to interact with are all also going to be kind of open world camera, uh, unfixed camera. So, uh-huh. um, wow. the other couple of things, uh, is you know, in the Isle of Armor, you're you're basically uh, meeting a guy named Mustard, 
who uh, was Colonel. Colonel, Colonel Mustard, <laughs> yeah, is his name. With the candlestick. <laughs> um, and you're, the, all they really say is you're going to be training alongside him as he was the like past trainer of uh, Leon himself. Um, and mm-hmm. so you're going to go over there. Love Leon. Hang, on, hang out with He's this. He's such a goof, you know, always been <laughs> lost, always wearing that sweet cape. Oh, yeah. God. I don't know if you've seen Mustard, but he has eyebrows to envy. His eyebrows are his, his sideburns and his bangs all at once. take him down. <laughs> my eyebrows are my second best feature. And you'll never guess my first. It's just my hair. And I think that the... I, I really enjoyed playing a lot of... Uh, Having this news, I think, in a little positive momentum behind Pokemon Sword and Shield has motivated me to get back into it. Like, yeah. And also, I picked up my Galarian Snow, uh, Slowpoke. Oh, got to grab him. Uh, grabbed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I've made him part of a permanent fixture on my team. Nice. And you know also who I think he looks like? Who does he look like? Okay, well, Danny, don't take this the wrong way. I think that's a joke. <laughs> I think, uh, but any of us should be so lucky because he's adorable. Yeah. Uh, but he looks a little bit, Matt, like Edelgard from Fire Emblem Three Houses, I think. Like the yellow crown-ish element <laughs> looks a little bit like her headwear. Um, that's kind of, I, I get serious vibes of that. I wouldn't say my attraction is so much physical to slow, Glaring Slowpoke, but I'd also say um, it is... Uh, <laughs> It's fundamental to me. I would love to, to see being. that kind of a crossover. Like I know, uh, I'm bring, sure it exists, but I bring Fire Emblem it. into something else. Yeah, I see the little like the yeah. Like and the you know what? Here's another there. idea: put Fire Emblem in Smash. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that'd be great. But uh, I I felt like okay. So another big part of this DLC is that there's going to be added in a hundred pokemon in each of the two expansions so 200 total oh. that will okay, give you yeah, the ability yeah. to transfer in pokemon from previous games right. just like other games pokemon that were not included in the national decks when sword and shield released of course that was the big decks at controversy that we talked about but so then that content is free so the fact that it's going to allow you to if you have caught a pokemon outside of the game that is in these now 600 pokemon ish in the decks they'll now be brought in uh so we're pokemon is about about a thousand pokemon uh so it's not quite we're not quite all the way there, but it's no. a step in the right direction. It is. And seemingly, these will be, you know, um, models and animations, no matter how you feel about it, and balance things that will be useful for, you know, whatever the next mainline game is. I'm sure this will, you know, make that transition easier to further completing the National Decks. And it's a great show of their, um, you know, really addressing the decks at thing that they had shown no signs of actually being interested in, you know. And you um, have, you guys have seen them, like, some of the kind that, the controversy yes. around it currently, like uh, con- the continued controversy, which is oh, the price of the DLC, or not the, the, not the price. I think uh, the 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 uh, I guess the. the I honestly don't feel like there's it. a good. There's it's like, not a I great don't argument, feel there's but a it's good argument. Yeah, yeah, people people are complaining that uh, the game. There's a conspiracy that right, like this was planned added content or content that could have been put into a game that many fans feel like is not full and complete and lacking content um uh, pointing at dexit as a, an example of lacking content or laziness and you know uh blaming the pokemon company or um game, game free, freak for or being even Masuda, yeah. specifically lazy yeah, and greedy yeah, exactly. and i think and, yeah it's just i think it, we've talked about this before on the show i bet i really do not think there's a there's no valid argument to being upset about this announcement like no matter what it's 200 more pokemon and that content is free and if you want the expansions, just like Matt said, this is a way to get them that is not restarting a whole new game that is basically ex- very, very similar. A carbon yeah. copy, yeah. Yeah, and um, that's not to say they won't do something like that at some point, but at the very least, it's a good way to expand your time with the game for two pieces of large DLC, seemingly for $30 is also and I, a good I, value in my book. I, and the, I agree, yeah. Go ahead. I just like that they're spread. I, the DLC is spread out too. That it, I think I love that yeah. just the the way they're prolonging the game. The same way they've done with Smash yeah. and other other releases. Breath of the Wild where, did a right. nice job at that. Right. And I think it yeah keeps those games relevant. They'll keep appearing. You know they're going to be on our Switch consoles, and there's going to be new stuff. There's going to be new things on the home menu. Like it, that is neat. And I the fact that the Pokemon accessibility is free is there's nothing to complain about there. Like and I think it speaks to a larger issue that is the issue that the fans have quote unquote fans like that they just want to you know see the world burn basically and they want they like Masuda and Danny were alluding to this but you know was tweeting and people like were losing his mind their mind for no there isn't a good argument to be upset about this announcement 
And he was like, you know, this is a holiday and it's a birthday. Like, can yeah. you be happy like, for one moment? Birthday, he said, me, can you can you let me take a break? Yeah. Or, or and the answer is basically no. Like, and I think it's just like they want to shame Masuda. They want to shame Game Freak, and and I because I think they want them to come back, you know, crawling back with some massive, you know, Breath of the Wild actually scale game or something like. I think they feel like they really want a win, and the only way they get a win is not the actual Pokemon they're professing to be upset about, but it's really have Game Freak crawl back to them and say they're sorry, and they're going to make this amazing thing for each individual person. That's right. going to be perfect, you know. I yeah, it's yeah. I it I think it is frustrating that it's like the it's just a lot of bad actors and that are kind of. Also, the number of times I'm clicking on a, an article about this and seeing the like one of the top comments being like a uh, paywall to get rid of Dexit, it, like it's just fake. Like that isn't how it works. That right. content is free. Like, right. and but people are like proliferating or refusing to look into it or it, people it, who are not actually interested in playing the game. Like people you know, just want to be angry and they, they want to be angry. Yeah. They're making up. They're making up reasons. And, and, a and, lot if, of them and that's up, fine. Right, if you but, don't, you don't like the game. Like the, I think there's a lot to be said about the, the level of challenge and difficulty and how interesting the story is. And like, you know, for sure. Austin, you said it yourself, like you, this is kind of exciting. Yeah. I think it's the best game of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's not, it has a lot of things. Uh, that uh, tied so, up. so Danny, Danny, have you, you've played a, some of it at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a little bit late to start, but now I'm about to. I'm just about to start the first gym. Um, oh, I've so just been really grinding started. in the wild area because. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I've just been exploring the wild area for like the past two days. Um, whenever I play, um, just using that as much as I can. Yeah, no, don't be wrong. There is appropriate rage at the game industry at times when need be. You know, Star Wars Battlefront Two a few years ago. Yep. Appropriate. You know, you you made the progression based on um gambling essentially um and absurd paywalls right. to get the characters you want to play with justified for sure and then i but i would just submit really fast just just to be you know holistic on that that stuff never did come to fruition for that game it was you know re removed before launch and the game is good right. i do think a lot of people still yes. are like oh ea and battlefront but battlefront is like excellent now like there's so much right. content and they, it's all there's not yeah. that gambling aspect was never in the game but it was justified, yeah, but people they, never gave credit because they just wanted to, you know, dunk. Yeah, no, and they, they course corrected accordingly. Um, I think, because I know they had initially mentioned that was going to happen before launch, so, and right. I'm glad that they, not that, like, they got the hate, but I'm glad that they got, they got the note from the fans, mm -hmm. like, that's not acceptable. Yeah. Um, so they, they course corrected. What I'm saying is, I do think this rage is misplaced um because this is not one of those developers and one of those studios that's trying to rip you off um when i initially heard the news there was dlc yes i was a little not bummed but i was like oh god my wallet um but when i heard them say we're not doing ultra short ultra sword ultra shield um as in addition to this this is the sequel you're only paying half you know essentially um then it was justified yeah because now yeah. that means if we don't get another pokemon game for like two three years it's a full-fledged new game um and it doesn't feel like you're paying 120 bucks over the course of two years for the same game twice yeah i agree although i would just gonna ask both of you let's say like in a hypothetical world we do get a sword and shield 2 do right. you that in this you know black and white 2 which is the game that had the two at the end of the coda what did yeah. mix up the story a bit and was President has more of a sequel, but still, it was gen you know generally the same maps and whatever, just kind of remixed. And the, um, I guess my feeling is like, I don't know that there is anything wrong with Ultra Sword Ultra Shield e existing if it were to. I I feel like it's, you know, people can choose to buy it if they want or not. Um. I mean, I think I think the the big criticism with Pokemon leading into this was like, take a break on your release dates, like focus on putting out quality content like this was. And I think this is a step in the right direction of like, we're taking a year to or even two to build out the world we already built. Um, like I love like for me, I don't I wouldn't go I wouldn't buy it too. like no. And obviously there's an expansion pass here, but. I don't need to go back into the same right, world. Right, I agree. Like, it have to from, be significant. 
from scratch. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'd rather be like, oh, all that time I invested in this game, I can now take my team and all the Pokemon in my box and I don't know, just that same experience and go discover a new part of the world and another part of the world like that. That's more exciting and I think more up to date with like the the, the gaming times that we're in. Um and it yeah. and is more enticing for me to buy. Like they got me. I my thirty dollars is spent. Like <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, I've already done it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the cool the cool some of the cool features of this uh that they mentioned was specifically part two that there's gonna be some new co-op play features around going deeper into the like hives or the the little dens that the Pokemon in the wild area existing currently. Which by the way, mm-hmm. still haven't gotten to uh max raid battle with either of you and it really bums me out. Um, Where is okay, Danny, you're you just finished gym or you're at gym one essentially. It mm-hmm. does kind of start rolling though once you get the gyms going. I mean it does pick yeah, go. Oh, I felt oh, like it's a lot it's kind I of front loaded with story and it, yeah. it starts to thin. Sa- nicely. Side, yeah. Sidebar. So I I've oh. I've beaten the game and I've beaten the post game and I'm I'm just kind of really enjoying just Have you done any of the battle thing. tower things or anything yes, that I've gone to the, I've gone to Battle Tower. I've uh I won't spoil anything, but it's that's probably been the most fun in the aspect of like challenging Pokemon game for yeah. me. Like that to me and like this is awesome. Why wasn't there a challenge like toggle in the for the start? Like I just Danny, my advice to you was stop doing anything in the wild area. Stop grinding because the more you grind, the less challenging the entire experience becomes. And then you're just one hitting your way through these gym leaders. Um, if you just, you know, if you plan your types right. And it's just not, it's it, that yeah. to me sucks. And so much so that like the game like kind of autocorrects itself to like, I, I, I think so, like match your level at because I was like leaps and bounds. Like I was at least fifteen levels above when I started. Is this post story no. or later and in the story? The, and later that in that's... the story, towards when I, once I beat the gym and went on to the finals, um, and I, I I really do love the, the the way they set that up. That all the gym all the gym challengers basically who've made it through uh, and gotten all the um, the badges, you know, they face off with each other, and only one of them has the opportunity to face off against all the gym leaders who are all vying for the champion. Hmm. Um, so only one of the challengers gets to basically like compete all of you, like all those gym leaders every year come back to compete in this tournament, which is interesting. So yeah, um, the world of the challengers and the endorsement is fun. Like, and I yeah, actually thought the world is fun. Yeah. I And I, yeah, the characters are simple for sure. Yeah. Like there was a little more to hop than maybe I expected, but not enough. A little, a little, not enough. And it was, is is intriguing, especially some of the post game stuff is intriguing. And I wonder if they'll explore that more in the yeah. Isle of Armor or Crown Country. But Danny, what I'll say is my best and favorite battle was I got to the last battle of the, of the main game prior to the post game. And it was, I would like before that I was just blowing people away and it was because I spent so much time just beefing them up and I, I we both got down to our last Pokemon and I don't know if I just had one like mistake that I made that kind of spiraled into like making just those several wrong moves and next thing you know we're just both down to our last Pokemon after I tried to revive one and used a couple like use specific moves to kind of bring others back and like switch out to like better match type and boom there we are at like the final end of the game both with our final strongest pokemon out and everyone else knocked out and to me that was like wow that was that's exciting. that's awesome i, I was feel, not expecting that to happen i mentioned a little with jordan i've my experience because i basically just walked through the wild area like i did get some items and every time yeah. i see a pokemon i have not caught that i can catch level yeah. requirement i will catch it but um because I never really spent much time there, or that was a lot of where the high level Pokemon are, at least through the first like half of the gyms. Right. I actually found and I was only using Pokemon that were like, oh, I've this is new to me and I will use it. Like yeah. I was not trying to use things that I've perceived. Like my team is like a really uh it's a ragtag crew, but I've enjoyed that. And I've felt yeah. like um the you know, I've played through every single mainline Pokemon game. I like totally love the series. And I've actually felt because Anytime I'm in the wild, not even wild area, and I see a Pokemon that I've caught, um, I just walk by it. If it's something I've not caught, I will catch it. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I'm not doing the like pseudo random encounters. Of course, they're on the map. I'm just avoiding them, which is great. Yeah. Wild area. Mm-hmm. And it's actually made 
it a little tense for the most part. Like I've, you know, I'll, I'll get people knocked out and be like, okay, well this other guy I'm going to use, like, I don't really have a great type advantage. I don't, I've never really felt close to losing all the way, but I've had plenty of times where I'm like, I want to get my sir fetched in there. Yeah. I want to get this experience and to keep him alive against these things that he's effectively type matched up against, you know, he's fighting their steel or rock yeah. or what, what, what have you. Um, and it's still like he's on the edge of surviving and that's been enough tension by actively choosing to not grind, which is pro which is how I'd recommend. Playing. Yeah. Ex oh exactly. man. I just wanted dreadnought so bad that I, I yeah, I mean, if that's, if you feel like that'll be fun for you, then also that's fine. But for me yeah, personally, yeah. I wish it were, I like it when it's tense and I've actually felt like this game had, because I can make that intentional decision to avoid Pokemon that I know mm -hmm. I have caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do so. And it's man, I'm never that over leveled. I will yeah. say towards the latter half of the gyms, at this point, I'm, my level is starting to run away a little bit. Like, but at least for like gyms four through six, or probably three through six, I've been like, yeah, my level's been maybe one or two levels above that of the trainers, which has been fun. Wow. So, yeah, the Dreadnought is probably one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, I really like him. So cool. um, God, he's been great. Great and design. Have you, have you seen the Gigantamax for him too? Yes, I have. No, and I don't. So I also I haven't looked it up, but like you can level, you can. Level so this is being Pokemon. addressed a little bit in the DLC, basically. But essentially, right. in order, so po some Pokemon, as we know, have Gigantamaxes, like which are yeah, yeah, a large. It's, it's both. Special, like, yeah, they look Dynamax they look form, cool. Right? They're essentially like a Mega Evolution in Dynamax yeah, form. Yeah. Like they have a new design and. Um, it looks extra menacing. They might have some extra abilities and the they look awesome. I wish everything had it. And I love that like the new starters are going to have those forms come yeah. this DLC, which is just another, I think, thing to really be excited about. And um so, but the way in order to unlock Gigantamax forms, which I think is a missed opportunity, you have to yeah, level up their Dynamax level or like defeat Gigantamax Pokemon. So again, the Mega Evolution equivalent ish. Not they don't mechanically work that way, but the in raid battles. In you order go, to unlock, you go and find them, and they show up. Yeah, on the, on the and then that gets you the materials in which to unlock it for like your dreadnought, for example. Right, exactly. But mm. that's going to be changed, adjusted at least yeah. in the DLC, and it's not going to be so restrictive because that's the thing that kind of sucks. It's like it, it'd be more exciting if I just used a Dynamax in a you know awesome gym battle, and all of a sudden I had this really cool form of the Pokemon I was using versus yeah. like. Oh yeah, I, I mean, and you see that a lot in the gyms, and you're like, "Wow, that facing that off against like that thing," so you know? Cool. Like, uh, Danny, I would say that uh, the like my favorite thing about the, uh, the going into those Dynamax dens and doing the max raid battles is um, one, you get to see those Pokemon, but two, like if you if you do beat them, you get a lot of really great items, especially those the 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 XP candies. Oh, yeah. um, Oh, yeah. the, the the large extra large medium candy is like it they will help you bring like a, a pokemon you really love but you caught it at such a lower level than your current like stand like party like bring them up to speed to be at a level where they can compete with your current current party and that's very helpful problem was is i was using it it, it not for On that the pokemon, purpose you were i was just like yeah up. just like level them up baby until I, you know they just yeah so i because again doing that's something that. i did not do i did not do any yeah. raids i did not get any candy yeah. and um besides once or twice and i've liked that yeah but i would like, how are all of your uh your guys's polka employees you you got some good jobs completed a lot of really great jobs open up like throughout the game especially in the post game where the amount of stars or experience they can get from them are insane uh i mean to the point that they're like they're evolving, especially if you start them low yeah. and you get. Oh like, yeah! Some oh yeah! Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, some of them you yeah. can send thirty of your Pokemon off to. Um, That's what. So some of them can have more than three. Yes. Oh yeah. They okay. they gotcha. continue to expand, and you have to be really like specific. Some of them have types. Others are very vague, and you just tr you try your best. And if you if you match up whatever they're looking for, they'll especially like, you know, gain a lot of XP. But there's a lot of this game is just a lot of really unique ways to to kind of basically get your Pokemon up to, up to snuff that you have in your box um, mm -hmm. and earn some, they earn money and experience when they come back. I will tell you this. So I've spent a lot of time in uh, camping. Um, I've like one, it's really helpful when I don't want to like fly or 
transport myself to a, a Poké Barn to, or, you know, get... To heal up. Uh, we, no, well, to buy a bunch of... Yeah, or to heal up, but specifically to buy a bunch of revives or stuff. Like, you know, it's that costs money, even though this game is very generous with money. But the other thing is, not only do they gain experience from if you're, like, playing around with them, but the effects of your Pokemon feeling attached to you really show up in the game when they survive a one-hit kill, you know, because they wanted to make you proud. Because, <laughs> or, yeah. or they shake off the poison um, or the paralysis because they're, like, yeah. they, they're, they're fighting, fighting for, for you. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, that, whenever that happened, I was like, oh, my God, Dreadnought. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, Thank you. All the Jedi <laughs> flow through you. Like all those. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but throwing all those little, you know, all the rubber balls and making you go and catch them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, really paid off. <laughs> I remember when you were so little. Yeah, but just a little. But the curry is the curry is great, right? The curry like heals them all their sad conditions and and yeah, I like doing up. the cooking. Yeah. I find the mini game pretty fun. It's cool how yeah. it changes when you're at campsites with people. Like yeah. you have to change the timing yeah. of it. I, yeah. It's actually kind of hard to get a good thing going. It, it's a definitely just, basic as far as it's all just determined yeah. by what the special ingredient is that you add it's not really that at all dependent on the berry composition no um yeah it's very specific to that and also i wish that when you stopped by a guest tent that you had some sort of option to like and like an animal crossing when you had a visitor visit and you walked in you can kind of barter with them with a piece of furniture in their tent you're like oh they have that ranch armoire mm-hmm. like i want it and then you just try your hardest to befriend them to a point where they'll sell you something in this, I was like, oh, my God, they have a Lucario or they have, you know, whatever. And I, like, I want that Pokemon. I wish they would, like, be up for a trade or there was something else to do. Because you, yeah, your, your Pokemon will interact with theirs in the, at the campsite. Like, they'll all be out there, or at least some of them, I think. And I was like, cool, what's this for? If Like, why am I playing with them? I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's so yeah, it's just like, oh, this, this campsite party. has, like, all the Eevee evolutions. Like, this looks really cool. Yeah, and it's like, 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 see you. I'll see you guys. Bye. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for having it there. Yeah, it would be kind of cool if it's like before he's taking a liking to you. Would you consider yeah. trading him for your whatever? Like, you so know, anyways, trade you your butter. Like you trade your butter when you like sit in someone else's camping because you're like, hey, I didn't bring anything for the party. Yeah. I'm not supplying you anything, but I'm gonna sleep in your tent. I'm gonna rest up my Pokemon. I'm gonna cook my food here, and then I'm heading out. <laughs> I'm hitting the road. What kind of guest you are you? Never heard of me. I'm endorsed by the champion himself. <laughs> um, so, the so yeah. 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 That's well, I agree. Like I think um we should definitely do like a final cast. We should definitely do get Jordan on to talk about the game like as a whole when yeah. we've all finished it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, and I would love to do some like I, I would love to do some of the cooperative speakers with you guys. If whether yeah. it's in the Crown Tundra or even like the Max Raid battles, like there have been like I've lost to a lot of a lot of Pokemon. One because I'm either I can't I'm like I search for people to join and I just can't find mm-hmm. any or it takes too long, uh, and I just opt for, uh, you know, use the AI, and I'm the just, I just can't, I can't get past some of them, and it's hard, because I really want that Pokemon, or yeah. I want the items that they hold, and they're just five stars, you know, yeah. in terms of strength, so, yeah, I would love to do, like, do it cooperatively, or just, yeah, that would be great, it. I think that, overall, and just to kind of end this, but to tie it back to our last episode, like, I think the DLC, and the free DLC, is a, good step towards the service game that we had talked about with pokemon i think the areas to tighten up are like you mentioned like the matchmaking it's like the you know the it's very it's a very strange like sending your poke like hitting you know hitting uh the y button and opening up like your wi-fi is like very bizarre like or like the fact that like the that whole interface is bad and the matchmaking stuff is bad like um the fact that both the minus and plus button both do the <laughs> same thing and that is the bike is strange like there's like a little it's like that should be used for like a feature that makes more sense like in this area like the it's just like that the presentation of those things still feels very game freak which is like pretty slapdash in a lot of yeah. like little details but i think overall it's a good step in the right direction i'm excited to see what the dlc looks like um and kind of where it goes from there. It's hard to imagine the DLC honestly comes out and people are not maybe salty about like the size of. I feel like it's going to come out and people are going to be like, oh, it's not as much as I thought or whatever. But I am excited. And I think people should keep in mind that you don't need to buy it and you still get access to a lot of these updates. Yeah, the the updates happen. They'll happen. Yeah. Happen you out. yeah so. right. Yeah. Fun times. Can't wait for the camera. It's just, it's, it's funny that literally in like they say fall, but we don't know when. But 
I assume they're they're matching up the summery location with the summertime and the the wintry location with closer to winter. Like for me, I can't believe we're all going to be talking about the same game, you know, in late yeah. 2020, which is huge considering Animal Crossing will be out and it'll time up perfectly with the launch of the Switch Pro. I'm really excited <laughs> yeah, for exactly. this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and you've year. got an independent confirmation of that too. But I know yeah. we're not supposed oh, to talk absolutely. about it on the show. Oh, so, we'll um, <laughs> but yeah, I actually, and it does raise one more interesting question, which is that when we look at the Switch's lineup in 2020, it's still sparse you know nintendo has been announcing things and releasing them within like six months so anything can happen but the it means i would be very surprised if we had a mainline pokemon game this year given this dlc um so it makes you wonder what the big fall game is yeah i'm hoping we don't too but so it just makes you wonder you know i think it's ruled out i don't think anyone thinks now we're gonna get like let (laughs) i don't think anyone thinks we're gonna get let's go meryl and togepi or something I think right. that we're thinking that isn't happening now, <laughs> you know. Um, and actually, I take it back. I would play that. I would definitely I, play I want, it too. I just want to walk around with a little Togepi. I imagine that this is it for Pokemon the year, which is awesome. But um, it leaves a gap in their fall launch, which is a really important period for them because the PS5 and Xbox Series X will be coming out. So you wonder if there will be a Switch Pro or Breath of the Wild two. It, or right. both to fill I mean, how else space. do you go head to head with the other two if you have both of those at the same time I mean, that's quite that would yeah. well a lot uh, of those maybe an awesome switch pro rumors with, uh, but, but switch pro rumors we're talking about like the like basically q2 of their of their fiscal year yeah this earlier. thing is going to be coming out which is like yeah. whoa but then if oh. you know does that mean we get breath of the wild 2 bundled or, with it or, with a cool right, special exactly. edition one you know but because would, we look i already ordered the pre-bundle yeah. no, they were getting more head on with yeah, well, you releases. figure Breath of the Wild probably would not come out till the fall, just given right. like what we assume is you know development not uh, far enough along. So yeah, exciting uh, year though. We'll talk about it more. Cool. Okay, let's end this episode very quickly boys okay. with we are on the precipice of the smash direct we're going to get one on the 16th and it's going to talk about the final character for the dlc fighter pack one which we know there'll be more but this is character five so far just to recap we have gotten on the the paid roster we've gotten joker from persona 5 we've gotten hero from the dragon quest series we got banjo kazooie and we also got terry from the king of fighters uh, final fight series mm. as character four so the um character five and i just want to get your guys gut reactions i'm gonna ask you a couple questions i'm just curious i want to get a little you know a and p's feeling the water here okay so mm-hmm. getting the temperature so my question for you is do we th- looking at that line of characters so far they've all been third party there hasn't been any of those characters in the paid fighter pack um, since Piranha Plant was part of like, just an early purchase option and does not For count. For everybody, yeah. It was, um, none of them have been Nintendo exclusives, right? They're all uh, No, and deals. that's why so, I, I hate conversation in general, because I'm like, <laughs> I, have, I don't know. I would tell you what I want it to be, but I couldn't tell you, like, who, based on this trajectory, it's going to be. Like, yeah, it's just... been pretty hard to guess. Like, I think that out of those, the only one that really felt like a lock honestly was banjo was banjo yeah, yeah like yeah people wanted that for so long it's awesome he's in there i'm always kind of surprised frankly when i play like my my, my brain is like has a, a, a trouble like reconciling having him and duck hunt dog in there i'm like it's just i find it um very challenging uh, as a mental <laughs> exercise but the um the other ones i felt pretty random dragon quest is the closest thing to being like a, a sponsorship element since that dlc launched around the same time as the dragon quest 11 s uh version came out for the switch but that game of course already exists on playstation uh, 4 that is a multi-platform square enix uh series the so let's do what do you guys think you know you would like out of it um and what do you think would be i'm, I'm just curious what would be like a big hit what would be really exciting and what would be disappointing as far <laughs> as character announcement uh Oh, I will. I mean, it's not the characters I want are all Nintendo IP, and That's fine. it's Go not going to be. Uh, and both of them are kind of fun to see. Uh, one, the Ring Fit Adventure Girl would be awesome, or even like throwing Drago, yeah. like that I, would be I, I as a heavy yeah. character. Uh, I want to yeah. see that spandex. 
Oh and my god! Alternate no. costumes, switch out the yeah. colors. <laughs> give me, give me a shirtless Shulk equivalent. But I, for I think I just want to see we wow. we fit trainer fight uh, ring fit. That would be funny. That would be girl. epic. Final well, destination. Right? And wouldn't that no be items. such a fun little uh, food like, only little video that, uh, that they yeah. can put together with those two? But. But I know a lot of people are talking about Dante from Devil May Cry, given that the like the special edition is coming to the Switch in 2020. So that's my more practical yeah. guess. But I would prefer either Ring Fit Girl or one of the freaking ARMS characters. Like, that would be so cool. <laughs> I know, this series is so, Min Min. I so want Min Min. dead. Like, the I ARMS know. is such a great... The designs are awesome. The game is awesome. Another great application, like we talked about on the other episode, that... The, the joy con doing something interesting like that yeah. and the game had free dlc which is so cool but yeah. um is like so dead in the water it's almost hard to even believe it's still on the same console as all these other games we're talking about yeah it's like i would also love just from that van like oh luigi's mansion get you know get a Gooigi get the dog there. get Gooigi. Gooigi. Like, yeah. um but okay so you would like those uh danny what would you like uh i feel like i just have to give up on spyro uh oh, that's yeah. just not gonna happen um who would i like i wouldn't mind another pokemon i really wouldn't yeah um i i, I don't know who the pokemon i would just take another one yeah but what do i think actually will happen think Raichu, is more practical yeah go ahead <laughs> oh, i take Raichu. Take uh, uh, uh a lowland yeah. Raichu. you want him in his little surfboard yeah, tail i'd kiss him um <laughs> yeah but uh practically speaking i think it's gonna be whatever sakurai I know he's got a varied interest of the video game yep. space and it really is just all over the place. So yeah, it's probably gonna be another no name sword player. I've never heard of <laughs> probably. Before. We know he loves monster uh, hunter too. And that game did have a big uh, expansion right. series still in conversation with Iceborne. You know, that could be something like that. And of course that has cameos in ultimate. Um, I could see I would that take happening. master chief. I would definitely take master chief. That'd be amazing. Oh, I take it back. I would take the arbiter. I would take the arbiter. <laughs> You're a sick man. Yeah. I need you off the show. Wow. <laughs> um i would love arbiter that's so silly um oh, can you imagine yeah. people just losing their mind it'd be like if double if, sword but, or sword and plasma oh, right opposed to yeah. snake if raiden so that's a metal, joke for the metal gear fans but like that it basically like both metal gear solid and halo for their sequels you know hugely anticipated games both starred not the characters everybody loved yeah and people lost their mind <laughs> um the i think okay so this is my feeling it's the final one right everyone kind of let terry off the hook frankly terry is cool he fights differently like he looks cool he recognizes a fighting game legacy that's really important it's cool to see him up there against different fighting franchise um street fighter characters but i think he's a good fit um but you know i do feel like i do feel like in the case of um in the case of this it's been the final dlc character it's got to be something big other people will probably get upset and i think doing a third party one like master chief i can see doom guy happening because of doom eternal um and I do think as far as characters they should avoid, they should avoid Fire Emblem, people <laughs> such a running joke. But I, that yeah, would have been no, a cool character. Really you should. know, what about Three Houses characters that have the three leads from, from that game, you know, that switch out like Pokemon Trainer? That'd be pretty awesome. Mm, that would be weapons. cool. I think that'd but be pretty cool. That said, it would, pe- it would people lose, you know, not like it no matter how it played. Um, so. Well, it's happening tomorrow. So at the time of this podcast, uh, listening, you will already know. <laughs> Right. Um, but we Do will it. talk about all of it in another Nintendo podcast. Until then, thanks, guys. It's been fun. Uh, we'll get, get together soon. Um, I'll see you later, Danny. Austin. Uh, so long. Farewell. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Avita, say goodbye. <laughs>